What if the next planetary disaster isn't aimed at Earth but Mars? Harvard astronomers are raising the alarm. The interstellar comet 3I Atlas, once believed destined for a harmless pass, is now tracking close enough to slice within the Moon's distance from Mars itself. NASA's latest data leaves no doubt. Their top analysts are on high alert, chasing a possible collision that could change everything we know about planetary safety. If this cosmic wildcard defies the odds, Mars might become ground zero in a solar system event no one saw coming. But just how real is the threat? And what's driving the most urgent warnings yet from Harvard and NASA? Inside Harvard's Center for Astrophysics, the first warning didn't come from a telescope, but from an error margin shrinking on a computer screen. At 2.13 a.m., a routine orbital fit for 3I Atlas finished running on the department's high-performance cluster. The numbers were different this time. Closer, tighter, with the closest approach to Mars cut by nearly 400,000 kilometers compared to the previous week. Not a direct hit, but now well inside the orbit of Phobos, Mars' innermost moon. The margin for error, once measured in millions of kilometers, had collapsed to less than the distance between New York and Los Angeles. Within hours, a flurry of encrypted emails and flagged Slack messages bounced between offices. Graduate students ran Monte Carlo ensembles, feeding in data from JWST and VLT. Each new observation from the network of ground and space telescopes nudged the trajectory a fraction closer to Mars. By the afternoon, a draft press release was circulating with the subject line, Potential Mars Intersection, Urgent Review. Professor Lowe's team wasn't alone. Cross-campus threads pulled in dynamicists from the Black Hole Initiative and the Minor Planet Center. One postdoc staring at the latest covariance matrix typed simply, This isn't a drill. The orbital uncertainty ellipse, astronomers' visual shorthand for where an object could end up, had narrowed to a razor. As of two days before the public alert, Harvard's internal risk models showed the probability of a Mars encounter rising by a factor of 10, even as the absolute odds stayed low. The difference was enough to trigger a red flag. The department's official statement was measured, but behind the scenes the mood was tense. Every new data point was logged, time-stamped and triple-checked. Harvard's computational models, now running hourly, showed a persistent trend. Unless a major outgassing event kicked 3i Atlas off course, the comet would pass dangerously close to Mars, close enough that a single unpredictable pulse could tip the balance. The decision to go public wasn't taken lightly, but with the margin for error shrinking and the world's largest space agency watching, the risk of silence outweighed the risk of alarm. By the time the press release hit the wires, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory had already requested Harvard's latest orbital solutions. The handoff was complete. For the first time, the world's attention shifted from academic caution to planetary defense. And the question hanging over every monitor in Cambridge, what if the next data point brings Mars into the bullseye? At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, the handoff from Harvard triggered a rapid recalculation. JPL's trajectory analysts, accustomed to running thousands of orbital solutions for near-Earth asteroids, now turned their full attention to 3I Atlas. The latest batch of astrometric data, piped in from the Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based arrays, forced a revision of the close approach numbers yet again. The projected safety margin, once measured in planetary diameters, had shrunk to a scale more familiar to lunar missions. As of the 14th of September, the best-fit solution placed 3I Atlas within 1.95 million kilometers of Mars, a distance less than six times the gap between Earth and the Moon. That number alone did not trigger alarms, but the object's retrograde, high inclination approach, crossing Mars' orbit at nearly 87 km s, set off a different kind of alert. At that speed, even a glancing blow would unleash energy on a scale never witnessed by human eyes. Every new data point trimmed the uncertainty ellipse, and every Monte Carlo run in JPL's ensemble models nudged the probability curve a hair closer to the critical threshold used by the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. In the control room, the lead analyst, Dr. L.C. Jones, quietly raised the internal monitoring flag. The object now fell within the PDCO's heightened scrutiny zone, a category reserved for events that could, in principle, jeopardize active assets or trigger international response protocols. Inside the agency, the call went out for cross-checks. 
the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was tasked with high-cadence imaging of the projected inbound path. The Deep Space Network's Goldstone antennas were scheduled for radar observations, aiming to resolve the nucleus and refine the velocity vector. Liaison from the Planetary Defense Coordination Office joined the nightly briefings, their presence a reminder that this was no longer an academic exercise. NASA's public statement remained measured, but the internal consensus was clear. The risk, however remote, now carried the full weight of government attention. For the first time, both Harvard and NASA's models converged on a single message. The margin for error had collapsed to a scale where planetary defense protocols demanded notice. The next few weeks would determine whether 3 I Atlas would simply graze Mars, or if the red planet had just been placed in the crosshairs of an interstellar missile. At TGYC, the heart of the 3 I Atlas mystery lies a rhythm that defies comet science. Not random, not chaotic. Every 17 minutes, like clockwork, the object's tail erupts in a measured pulse of gas. Time series data from the Gemini South Telescope in Chile, cross-checked by arrays in Hawaii and space-based platforms, confirm the cycle, 17 minutes, precise to within a few seconds, repeating for days on end. The effect is visible in the brightness curve, a sawtooth pattern rising and falling with each eruption. Spectrographs reveal a surge of cyanogen and carbon monoxide, the telltale markers of cometary outgassing. But here the timing is uncanny. Ordinary comets vent gas when sunlight hits fresh ice. Those eruptions are messy, triggered by cracks, surface spin, or uneven heating. In 3I Atlas, the pulses arrive with metronomic regularity, as if governed by an internal clock. Observers at the Very Large Telescope track the plume's direction, noting that each burst aligns subtly with the comet's changing velocity vector. Over a single night, the cumulative thrust from these eruptions nudges the object's path by measurable amounts. Harvard's photometry logs show micro-accelerations matching the timing of the gas events, feeding directly into the updated trajectory models. The implications are unsettling. Here, if each pulse acts as a tiny thruster, then 3i Atlas isn't drifting passively through space. It's steering. The 17-minute cycle, validated across observatories, introduces a variable that no gravitational model can ignore. For planetary defense analysts, this means every new pulse could narrow or widen the margin of safety. The next scheduled eruptions, already plotted on global telescope networks, are watched with growing anticipation. Is this periodicity a natural resonance or something stranger? As the countdown to the Mars encounter continues, the object's clockwork behavior has become the focal point of late-night debates in observatories from Cambridge to Pasadena. No known comet in the solar system pulses this way. The question is no longer just about where 3I Atlas is headed, but how and why it moves with such precise intent. Mars has never been the focus of so much speculation, not as a destination, but as a shield. The question has exploded across science podcasts, news panels, and social feeds. If 3I Atlas does hit, could Mars absorb the blow that might have doomed Earth? In a recent Pop Sky poll, 60% of respondents said yes, calling Mars a cosmic bodyguard. The logic is simple. Mars stands in the firing lane, and Earth, two planets away, watches from a safe distance. But the numbers tell a more complicated story. At its current mass, 3I Atlas carries the impact energy of 2 million megatons of TNT. That's enough to shatter crust, vaporize ice, and launch a shockwave across the thin Martian atmosphere. The debris plume alone could hurl dust and rock into interplanetary space, some of it with enough velocity to cross the gulf to Earth. So, while Mars might take the brunt, the aftershocks could ripple far beyond the red planet. Planetary scientist Dr. Nia Tran, a frequent guest on streaming science shows, breaks it down this way. Think of Mars as a cosmic bumper. It can take the hit, but the fragments could ricochet in unpredictable directions. In computer models, the so-called halo effect from a Mars impact is real. Fine dust and larger fragments could drift outward for years, intersecting orbits as far as Earth's, though the risk to our planet remains remote. Social media is alive with what-if scenarios. Some users cheer for Mars as a sacrificial hero, others worry about a chain reaction. Could a hit on Mars change its orbit, or even destabilize the inner solar system? The answer from every orbital dynamicist interviewed is no. Mars is too massive, and the energy, while enormous on a human scale, barely nudges a planet.